Quantrix is an agile and powerful tool designed expressly for modelers and planners. The multidimensional matrix engine powering Quantrix enables your team to capture behaviors and relationships for every aspect of any business so that you too can model your business future. Here's what some of our customers say about Quantrix. They love how the Quantrix experience helps their planners in finance, supply chain, and operations to capture business dynamics quickly, to consider more scenarios in less time, and to spend far less effort maintaining and extending their models as business conditions change. This quick demonstration will show you a few of the key capabilities that make Quantrix uniquely suited to solve these challenges, including an elegant and intuitive structure, efficient natural language formulas, robust model relationships, single-click scenarios, and more. If you've ever lived through the pain of rebuilding your whole model just to add a new product or service, this video will show you how Quantrix can help. Imagine we are a manufacturer with a variety of products that we sell into different regions. We'd like to put together a forecast, including some possible best and worst case scenarios, and share it with our team to help plan for what's ahead. Let's open up an introductory model template and get going. What you see here is a default matrix. We'll start by renaming this category from B to Products. Then let's name this first item Product 1, and each time we hit Enter, Quantrix will automatically add and increment our product items. Now let's put in some dummy sales data for each of our products. OK, now let's add in the time frame. We can make, say, quarters, and hit Enter a few times to complete the year. And finally, we'll name the category for these items, Quarters. You've heard me mention categories and items. These concepts are very simple but powerful ideas in Quantrix. You can think of them as just containers or labels. Categories contain items, and items contain cells. You'll see more as we go along how, using these concepts, we can very quickly create an elegant and robust model structure. Now, we'll probably want to summarize our sales over all products and all quarters, and we can do that using a formula. We'll add a new item to hold the results and call it total. You might be tempted to put your formula into this cell, and of course you could, but Quantrix allows something much more useful. While the total item is clicked, we can type the equal sign, and that will bring us to the formula editor with our item name total already there on the left side. For the right side, we can type sum, and then, just like in a spreadsheet, drag the cursor over the items that we want to sum. I want to make sure you notice that our formula is at the level of the item, and so there's no need to copy it into the individual cells. That's why we see those dashes. The formula is already there, waiting for values to compute. Let's do the same for the columns and create a year-to-date summary. This time, we drag across the column items. All formulas in Quantrix are in natural language, so they are completely self-documenting. Anyone can easily read them, either to understand and get acquainted with our model, or to troubleshoot it if ever there's a concern. If we click on the first formula again, we see the blue-gray shading showing that this formula is responsible for computing the bottom row of our matrix. But see the hash background? That means the second formula overlaps, or eclipses, the first one. That's not a problem here, because they'll both have the same result. But for clarity, we can just literally tell the other formula to skip the total and let the first one cover it. Now we can see that each formula covers a different part of the matrix. OK, so we just created item level formulas for total and year to date. But we can also create formulas at the category level. We'll use that method to fill in these middle cells with a forecast, where each quarter depends on the previous quarter. So let's click on our quarters category and type equals to create the formula. How do we tell Quantrix to move from one quarter to the next? We can use these convenient modifiers in the formula bar. Quarter this, meaning whichever quarter the formula is calculating, equals quarter previous. And for now, we'll just multiply by two. Voila, we have our forecast for the whole matrix. But notice this formula is overlapping the totals that we just made. 
We could type in the skips, like before, but Quantrix is smart enough to know where the formulas overlap, so we can just insert skips and we're done. At the moment, we have a two-dimensional matrix, just a simple table. If we add regions to the model, we'll expand it by a third dimension. We can click on the Products category, hit Enter, and rename this new category Regions. Drag this category to the left, and then we can name our items. We'll start with North, and then look at how our model is growing. Let's just replace all of Q1 with random numbers for now. And we can see that our formulas all continue to work, and we now have just a few formulas taking care of 100 cells. The larger your model gets, the more efficient and effective this method becomes. We can do a lot with these categories. Let's say we'd rather view products across the top and quarters down the side, or even view a separate version of this table for each region. Quantrix allows for always-on pivoting, and the formulas just know what to do no matter how crazy you get with those pivots. I'll just undo the last few moves. Now, it would be great if our product sales doubled every quarter, but maybe not all of them will. We'd like to have a separate growth rate for each region. I'll drag over a new blank matrix to hold those values. Now you might think we need to create the region items again and somehow look up the values from one matrix to another. But here's another powerful and unique advantage of Quantrix. We can just drag the region category over and link them together. Now we have a place for each rate. So let's say 110 percent, 115, 120, and 200. It's worth mentioning now that we can add a new product or region at any time. And we can do it from anywhere. Let's say we want to open up a new sales region in Barbados. All we have to do is hit return and pack our bags. Not only is there a place for us to add our growth rate, but there's a whole new section of the forecast already filled in with the formula. There are no unmatched VLOOKUPs in Barbados. The next thing to do is edit our formula to use these new values. We can highlight the two in our formula and then, you're going to love this, just click on the category called Scenarios and we are done. Notice the syntax here. It's still human readable. This means the values in the formula come from the matrix called Rates and the category called Scenarios. Because the matrices are linked on region, Quantrix knows to apply the rates to the appropriate region automatically. By the way, we could also drag the products over here if we wanted to specify separate rates by product and by region. We would then have a multidimensional forecast matrix linked to a multidimensional growth matrix. Let's undo that for now. This whole time we've been working with dummy data for Q1. Let's make the scenario more real by bringing in actual historical data. Quantrix has many ways to connect to data. We'll save all that for a future video, but I happen to have another matrix here with our actual Q1 sales results. How can we make use of it? You might guess we could drag region and product over. Maybe you could see that the forecast table already has categories with those names, so that's not going to work. But no fear, we can also tell Quantrix to establish the relationship without disturbing the structure that we've already built. Just right-click and choose Link Category. Quantrix is smart enough to suggest categories in the model with the same dimensionality and cardinality regardless of their names. We'll link products to products and regions to regions. The last step is to tell Quantrix that the values for Q1 that we previously entered manually should now come from the Actuals table. So Q1 equals Q1. Now we have our forecast in its full glory. OK, we're getting to the end of this basic demo, and I've saved the best for last. I hope this part about scenarios is going to blow your mind. We've already got the expected scenario here. Let's add two new ones for low and high. We can make a couple of quick item level formulas, low equals expected times 0.95 for a 5% lower rate, and high equals expected times 1.05 for a 5% higher rate. What do you think would happen if we now drag the scenario category over to our forecast? Boom! 
That is now 300 cells computed with just four formulas in this matrix. Maybe it's a little easier to navigate if we put the scenario up here in the filter tray. Finally, we have a goal of sharing this with our team. First, we'll remove the actuals matrix to simplify a bit, and then we'll save it to Quantrix Cloud. We get a prompt here to go directly to that web link. The whole model is here, and users can see and interact with it. Quantrix allows building out very sophisticated dashboards with on-screen controls, charts, and beautiful graphics. We'll leave all that to another video too. But for now, if I'm the sales manager for the South, there is no way I'm going to let the West beat me, so I'm going to bump my growth forecast up to 250% and maybe increase my chances of that Barbados posting. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you agree Quantrix is a very powerful tool for professional modelers and planners. There are a wide variety of cases for Quantrix, more than we can list here. If you'd like to check it out yourself, we have a free trial on Quantrix.com, hundreds of videos on YouTube, and a rich community where you can get your questions answered. That's all for now.